What's going on? My name is William Wingfield and I am a freelance artist that works in the concert world and the commercial world. Um, I would definitely say being a dancer, it, it is a journey. Our art form in itself um, has been underappreciated and underrespected for so, so, so many years and still to this day is. Um, the, as, as a dancer, a true artist, let me say, rather than a dancer, as a true artist, we give so much of ourselves from our inside out that it can be completely draining. So when you do a show for six months, seven months, and you have to do the same thing every night, I don't think people realize how difficult that is as a true artist. Um, the hardship in it comes with feeling like you haven't cheated your audience. Because some days, people go to work, they don't feel like working. It's the same with a dancer. Some days you go to that show and you, your body is aching from head to toe and you may not feel like moving at all. But the love of what we do, how we help people, how we change people, our performance could change two people's lives, it could change 50 people's lives, it could change a thousand people's lives in that audience. But if it changed one person's life, then we've done our job. I have a tattoo on my stomach that says, all I want is to rock your soul, and that comes from a song. But what it means to me is, is what we do is not a job to me, it's, 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 it's a calling. It's, it's part of my purpose. It's something so much bigger that if you aren't called to do it, you would never understand it. But hopefully one day you will feel the effect of it. To rock someone's soul is to affect them so deeply that you change their life from the inside out. And I feel that dancers definitely have that power. I've seen it done, I know it can be done. I myself am a victor of it being done. It has been done for me, so I know it is possible. And the, the hardship that you face going along the journey is part of the process. It's part of, it's part of who you are as an artist. The more hardship that you go through, the more battles you have to face, the more times you've been knocked down and get back up, the stronger you are. It builds that animal inside of you. That's why you see some dancers that you're just like, and you have no words to say, and then you see some dancers, you're like, oh, that was fun. But that one that you saw that left you with no words has a different beast inside of them, a different animal inside of them. And all of that is a makeup of, of what they've been through in their life. And I think the journey is so important. It's important for dancers out there to know, don't give up. Don't give up because everything that you're going through will come through in your artistry. With your personal life, with your emotional life, with your spiritual life, it will all come through in your artistry. And it's time that we show dancers out there that it's okay to be more than just someone who gets in front of a TV screen and shakes his tutu. Because yeah, that's one that'll make people smile, but you have more power than you realize. The energy that dancers possess is the most powerful thing known to humankind. And we can heal the world, like, like Debbie Allen says, through dance, through art, through movement, through smiling. My feelings on So You Think You Can Dance are, are so wide. There are so many feelings on So You Think You Can Dance. I feel like they have done more for dance in such a short amount of time than, um, than, than we could have hoped for. I feel like they have accomplished a lot by exposing the world to dance in so many different shapes, forms, and facets. So many, um, so many styles, so many genres, so many different choreographers. Now, there are a lot of true artists out there who aren't just the general public, who do know dance, who do know another side of the art. And to those true artists, a lot of times, So You Think You Can Dance can seem commercialized and can seem, um, I'm not gonna say fake, but can, can seem a little, a little false to a certain extent. But the thing about So You Think You Can Dance is, the stuff you don't see behind the camera. That's where the real goes on. We worked 10 weeks, seven days a week with not one day off. Not one day off, not one. I mean, our schedule went back to back to back to back to back. And I don't care if you're a true artist or someone sitting at home, you have no option but to respect that because I don't know many people that work that hard. Um, what it does though is it, it shoves you in the spotlight in a positive way. I don't mean shove in a negative connotation. It shoves you in the spotlight quickly. But for somebody like me, who was labeled as the professional dancer, it makes it very difficult for the people at home because, oh, you're the professional dancer. Rather than 
being happy with whatever I give and excited with whatever I give, they're expecting me to be absolute perfection. And anything less than that in their mind uh, is absolutely just, you should read some of the blogs and some of the things that people have to say. I mean, they, they can, if you read that stuff, it can really get to you because people can be very hateful. But everybody's there, everybody's working very, very hard. And um, it's, one of the har it's one of the hardest working experiences I've ever had to deal with because as a true artist, I usually have time to go in depth with, with where I want to go with my artwork and, and how I present things because speaking with your body is not easy. In order to speak with your body, you have to really understand what you're trying to say in order to convey that to everyone across the board, whether they're a dancer or not. And with the time frame that we're given, you don't really you don't really get that opportunity. I mean, we really are only given five and a half hours to run a routine. An hour and a half of that is in front of a camera. You know, the other portion of that, you're like trying to pick up moves, make sure you don't kill your partner, understand what the choreographer is thinking about, going through costume fittings, working on your solo. I mean, there's so many things to deal with in your mind that you don't really, I feel, ever get the chance to express your absolute truest artistry for America to see. Now what you do get to do is your nerves get to you and you get to give them all of your spirit. You know, they get to see your true spirit come alive because we went on stage a lot of times not knowing what we were going to do, not knowing our choreography, never having practiced a couple of lists. Like, so you're just going out there, you're hoping for the best, and you give your hearts and souls. So all I ask from America is that they appreciate So You Think You Can Dance for what it is. I mean, it's bringing dance to America. The kids are there, they're working their asses off. I mean, literally, working their behinds off. And we're, we're not just doing it for us, we're doing it for America as well. Like, to, to show how hard we're working and to, to make you guys smile and to make you guys fall in love with dance because that's what we love so much. And we know that everyone can love it just, just as equally, even if they don't do it. Live television is one of the most nerve-wracking, beautiful, anxious, heart-wrenching, eye-closing, popping out of your skin experience that I can explain, especially on that show, because there's so much energy floating around in your body, and dancers pick up on energy, so we feel the energy of everybody else around us, whether it be nerves, whether it, whether it be tears, whether it be smiles, we feel that. And then the crowd amps you up, at the same time, so I mean, it's just all over the place with with performing on, on live television with So You Think You Can Dance. I, would, I wouldn't trade it for the world, but at the same time, I, I couldn't do it forever. <laughs> it's not something as a true artist I feel I could do forever, performing in a competition live. Performing on television live, I definitely could do, given the time, given, given you know, the right circumstances, but, um, it can, definitely, it can definitely hinder you if you're not careful. If you're not strong in who you are, if, if you can't take a breath and focus yourself, it can, it can get the best of you. And, and we've seen it happen. We've seen it get the best of people. And we know they're better than what they showed us. But that's all that came out. I honestly don't feel I was able to show everything that I'm capable of or even an inkling of what I'm capable of on the show. And a lot of times it had to do with my nerves and the fact that I was titled the professional dancer, which added a whole nother layer on top. You know, then you have your family and friends watching, then you have your peers watching who I care so tremendously about. Like, it matters to me so much what my fellow artist thinks, almost more than like what the, what the world thinks because I respect them so much. And you know, it is what it is. You just go out there, you do your best, and you hope for the best. Um, I, left the, I left the show at the top eight. Uh, me and Comfort left the, um, the same week. Uh, what they do is once you get down to the top 10, the top 10 we know go on tour, and then from there it just, every week it gets more and more cutthroat, more and more cutthroat. And I felt like that week was one of my better weeks. I came out with my James Brown solo, you know, they were asking for more personality from me. I gave them the personality, and then boom, I was gone. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. That is the way the cookie crumbles. You can't let that affect the rest of your life. I was in the business before So You Think You Can Dance, and I know there is life after So You Think You Can Dance. And that's what I want the youth out there who they think that is the top of the cherry tree to understand. That yes, that is a big success. Yes, that is a great accomplishment. But there is so much more art out there. 
there's more art out there in the United States of America and there's even more art out there in the world. So I encourage them to go out in the world and be exposed to that. Don't just set your sights on So You Think You Can Dance because So You Think You Can Dance lasts a season. Then after that season's done and you go on tour and you're wrapped in this bubble, the bubble is popped and you're amongst the world and society. And I tell you, there are artists out there that have never been on So You Think You Can Dance but will eat you alive with how hard they've been working, their true technique and their true artistry. And those are the people that you wanna go out and learn from. Those are the people that you wanna go out and share your art with because that will continue to, to give you longevity in a career. Don't put that at the top of your pedestal because that will set you up for failure.